Okay, we're over here at uh, Blythe Ferry at the uh, Trail of Tears Memorial with Vanessa, and she's from the Eastern Band of the Cherokees, and they are here today having started in Georgia on their ride back to Oklahoma, about a 950-mile trek on their bicycles. Uh, tell us about your motivation to get involved and what's been the hardest thing to get ready for the ride. How long did it take you to kind of get ready? I started working out about um, about seven months ago as soon as I was notified that I had been selected. And <clears throat> what was the motivation? I mean, that's kind of a multifaceted yeah. question and answer. Um, I am the program manager for the tribe's cultural and language program. And I manage an immersion school. So basically every single day my life is about um, preserving our heritage and our language and I think that in today's time um, what I see with the youth in in Cherokee and, and, and probably in the Cherokee Nation as well and just in my conversations is that we have become so removed from who we are we um, place our identity solely on an enrollment card or the fact that we get to go to an Indian health service you know for our health care for me personally I have become disenchanted with um, daily life not and, and not as appreciative even though I get the blessing of hearing little children speak Cherokee just the the conduct of um, our people right now and, and them you know, losing sight of what was really important. I, I felt that, that, and for, that I needed to, you know, come full circle. That it wasn't enough for me to hear about it or read about it or talk to someone about it. That I needed to take this soul searching journey and put my feet on the places that my ancestors walked and, and, and put my hands where their hands were and to see the to see the places that they that they went and my mother said you know how as we had people who, who went on the trail and some returned and she had had this story and um, she's a beloved woman of the tribe and a fluent Cherokee speaker she said Renissa when we pray we pray we speak to the Creator Unehlanahi we face the East and when we pray, we, our backs are to the West. So through our prayers, we're sending everything that's bad behind us to the West. She said, think about that. They were sending them to the place where they sent all of the bad things. That's where all the bad things went. That's where the sun fell. They sent them not just to their doom, but they sent them to this greatest fear of, you know, it, it was just, not just their home place, but they we were, they were being sent to a place where we send all of our bad stuff. And wow. if you think about that, and, and we were standing on top of the mountains, and I, and I look out, and, and, I, and, and through the training, we've gone um, along these side roads, and I've got, had a, a greater appreciation for the beauty of Cherokee and we, and we go through places and I'm like guys I mean this may not be part of the Kuala boundary but this was ours look at this beautiful this was ours look at these mountains and we stand on the top of them we're about 3,000 feet up and we you know and I have my kids get out of the car and I'm like guys this is ours this was ours look at all of this look what the Creator gave us and they had to leave that. And it's not just they. And and on this trip, the one thing that has been going through my mind is this, you know, this one thing is one blood. There were centuries of history that we had as one people and all the suffering. It didn't just occur just during the Trail of Tears. It was from contact. We started losing our property. We started being, you know, atrocities, genocide. All of those things were happening. And then we had the Trail of Tears too. 
But when the Creator made us at Gadua, He made the first man and the first woman, we were one blood. And for all those centuries, we are one blood. And through all this time, and even though we were separated by the Trail of Tears, we are one blood. Shogwa Giga, one blood. And we have endured. Well spoken. Uh, is there any place in particular that you're looking forward to seeing on, on the trail? What I really wanted to do was to get down on my hands and knees and, and put my hands on those graves. To see the markers that were in syllabary so that I could read their name out loud and that I hope that my voice would carry to the Creator that name of the person I didn't know, but their souls would have been lifted because of the tragedy that was upon them. There'd been no way that they would have went anywhere else, but the Creator would, you know, swept them up. And I want to say their name and have them hear that. And for that moment, they will know that one of us remembers. All of us on this ride, we remember. And as long as we do these things, we will remember. Have you talked to some of the riders that, that have done previous rides and uh, how, they're, how that changed their life going on a ride before? Every rider that I have spoken to at Cherokee and has said that this is just a life-changing event. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm just two days into this ride and I know that it is a life-changing event. It became a life-changing event when the day I committed to do yeah. the ride. In your life, uh, you talked about your mother. Uh, is she the, the biggest link you have with, with your heritage or is there someone else uh, in your life that, uh, that kind of brought the heritage to you that you look to for stories and things like that? Well, my family is um, what I consider to be very traditional. Yes. Um, my step-grandfather was a, a, a medicine man, a healer, rather. And, uh, of course, you know, of course, all of my, mo my mom and her, all of her sisters are Cherokee speakers. We're all raised uh, very closely. Um, was raised doing traditional dances. And um, I think that there's been a resurgence uh, in um, getting connected with the... Um, people around, you know, my age, mm -hmm. um, going to stomp and um, it's trying to learn Cherokee language.